experimentally, okay, so how do you actually determine your K and the EA? Okay, so those are the two things scientists always look for. So the re typical reactions, okay, the typical measurements you are going to do is actually you measure your reaction rate constant, okay, rate constant as a function of temperature, okay? And the reason for this is actually very simple, okay, because if you look at these equations, to remove the exponential, scientists actually take the natural log on both sides. So you have natural log K on the left, uh, sorry, this should be actually lowercase k, okay, lowercase k. On the right will be, this first term become natural log a, right? The second term, all you have is actually negative ea over rt. So I'm going to rewrite this. It become natural log k is going to equals to natural log a minus ea over r times 1 over t. So what I really do is actually I just separate these terms into these two terms, right? And the reason I do this is because I want to let you know, okay, if I make this as my y, this is my x. Then I can write this as y equals to c minus ax, right? And this is actually a linear equation, right? In other words, if I plot out my natural log k, x is actually 1 over t, then I should expect to see a linear relationship. Okay? And then the slope is going to equal to your negative Ea over r. Intercept should give you natural log a. What scientists really do is actually they just do the measurements, okay? Measure your this data you, they, they have, okay? They measure the K at different temperature, right? So once they have this table, what I do next is actually they convert it into 1 over T on the Y axis become natural of K. Then once they got this table, okay, they are going to do, what they are going to do is actually they're going to plot the things out, okay? So they're going to get four data points, right? So they're going to fit the points to get the this linear regression, right? So you can get the slope and then get your natural log A. From the slope, because you know your slope is actually negative EA over R, right? So you can actually back calculate what is your EA. And from the slope, you can actually get the A using these numbers. So if we, we use this example as example, if I really do these things, I plot this things out, okay, and I do the fitting, then I will realize that I can get my slope from the fitting. So it's going to equal to a value of negative 19400, getting from the fitting. So this is actually from the fitting. Then you can get slope equals to this, and then your intercept is going to equal to 31.4. Okay, so I can actually get this information from the fittings. Starting from here will be something you're going to see in your homework. So what I do, what I'm going to tell you is actually, okay, a scientist is actually doing an experiment, okay? They measure this um, rate constant at different temperature. When they plot out their natural log of k versus 1 over t, they see a straight line. And then when they fit that straight line, they realize the slope is this value. The intercept is that value. And it's going to ask you, tell me what is the Ea of the reaction? What is A of the reaction? Because we know the slope Okay, it's going to equal to this. It's going to equal to negative Ea over R. R, in this case, you need to always, always use 8.314 joules per mole. So this R has to be 8.314. This is actually different from the things we told you in the chapter 10, right? Where you need to use the gas constant for that. Okay, but here is actually 8.314. So slope from the question you know is actually negative 
19400 equals to negative EA is actually the things we want to solve for. R is 8.314. So if you do this calculation, you will realize your EA is going to equal to 16100 joules or more. How about your A? A comes from your intercept, right? Because we know intercept is going to equal to your natural log A, right? It's going to equal to 31.4. What you do is actually you take exponential on both sides, okay? Then you get your A is going to equal to exponential 31.4. And then give you a number of 3.92 times 10 to the 13 per second. So again, your A is actually the, depending on what type of X reaction you have, right? It actually represents different things. In this reaction, you can see that it's just a, a isomerized process. So it doesn't have the collection terms. So here, the A is actually telling you how fast okay, this molecule is actually vibrates. They can actually reach the proper orientation that lead to the product formation. And if you look at this number, it's actually quite crazily big. Right? 3.92 times 10 to the 13 per second. That means within a second, your molecule vibrates that many times okay, to sample the proper configuration that can lead to the product formation. See how simple you can actually get all this information, right? You just do this very simple measurements, very simple measurements, okay? Measure your rate constant versus temperature. And then do these simple fittings, you can actually get the information about your EA and the A. And then from the A, you can start to imagine how crazy the molecule is to actually sample in all these possible uh, pathways that can eventually lead to the product formation. Another type of question you're going to see a lot in your homework is actually something like this. So typically in this question, you're going to see two different temperatures. So the keyword for this type of question is actually you see two temperatures. If you see two temperatures, this will be the equation you want to use for this chapter, for sure. So how does this work? It's actually, previously we say, the reaction rate constant K, again, this should be actually lowercase k, okay? Natural log K is equal to natural log A minus EA over RT, right? You can do the experiment at different temperature. So in this case, you can do the temperature at T1, which you can write out your natural log K1 is equal to natural log A minus EA over RT1. You can do your temperature at T2, then you can write out your natural log K2. It's going to equal to natural K minus EA over R T2. Then what you do is actually you do use equation one minus equation two. Therefore, on the left, you have natural log K1 minus natural log K2. On the right, you have natural log A minus EA over R T1 minus natural log A minus EA over R T2. In this case, natural log A, natural log A is going to cancel out. So if you summarize things, then you're going to see this natural log K1 minus natural log K2 equals to EA over RT2 minus EA over RT1. Then you just combine this. When you do the subtractions, we blend together, it becomes division, right? This one, you just pull out your EA over R together outside the parentheses, and inside will be one over T2 minus and one over T1. So if you look at this equation more carefully, there are four, uh, five parameters. K1, T1, K2, T2, and EA, right? So the question I'm going to encounter is actually a question that's going to give you four of these parameters and actually to solve the fifth one. So for example, it can give you K1, T1, K2, T2, ask you for the EA. That's one type, right? The other one is actually if I give you T1, K2, T2, EA, I can ask for the K1. But the most easily recognizable keywords in this type of question is actually you're going to see two different temperatures. Okay, if you see two different temperatures, this is actually the go-to equation you should use for this chapter. 
So let's give you one example. So let's read these questions more carefully. The rate constant of a first order reaction is certain number at certain temperature. What is the rate constant at different temperature if the activation energy is certain number? So here are the things you should quickly see is actually apparently there are two different temperature, right? Therefore, you know the equation you should use natural law. K1 over K2 is going to equals to Ea over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Don't mess up the order. Okay, otherwise you will never get the proper answer. This is actually the part I see students make mistake. You say if you want to do this, then it will be 1 over T1 minus 1 over T2. So I'm going to list out T1 equals to 98, right? Which I know my K1 is equals to 3.46 times 10 to a negative 2 per second, okay? T2 I know is actually 350K, okay? K2 is the things I want to solve. EA is going to equals to 50.2 kilojoules per mole. So this is another part that many students will make mistake. When you put in your EA, it has to have the unit of joule, not kilojoule. So to convert this one, this one is actually 50.2 times 10 to the third joules per mole, right? And that's going to equal to 50200 joules per mole. And then we know what our R is 8.314 joules per mole, right? You will solve for your K2 properly, okay? So I will just give you the number here. The K2 is 70.18 times 10 to the negative 2 per second. Okay, 